Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Swanson and I am the senior class president of Sandwich High School and a board member of the 501c3 nonprofit organization behind the Cape Plastic Bottle Ban Sustainable Practices. My name is Mary Cody. I've been a resident of Sandwich for many years and I am the town petitioner and filer for the Sandwich Municipal Plastic Bottle Ban and also a board member for Sustainable Practices. We are here today to discuss Article 9, the Municipal Plastic Bottle Ban, which will be voted on on Monday, October 28th at 7 p.m. in the SHS Auditorium at the Fall Town Meeting. We are here to answer a lot of the frequently asked questions we have received and to clear up some of the confusion and common misconceptions we are hearing. Because in all honesty, I think what we are proposing is simple and should be something bipartisan we can agree upon. But the main issue is, like I said, a lot of the confusion that's going on. Um, we hope this video will be informative and help get you to support Article 9, the Municipal Plastic Bottle Ban at the upcoming town meeting. Okay, so how this is going to work is we are going to read aloud some of the common questions we receive and we'll try to include them somewhat, you know, somewhere on the screen um, and we'll do our best to answer as clearly as possible. So to explain this better for you, I usually like to break it down into a few components. The first is that the town government of Sandwich would no longer be able to purchase beverages in single-use plastic containers with taxpayer dollars. The second part is that there can no longer be any sales of single-use plastic beverage containers on town property. And then there are a few exemptions to this ban, and they include um, emergency and safety personnel and operations, which are not affected by this ban. And in the event of a declaration of an emergency affecting the quality of drinking water, the ban would be temporarily lifted. So I think it's important to sort of discuss some of our rationale as well behind the petition. The ban rests on the assumption that the town government is established to protect the welfare of the people it governs, represent their constituents, and be the leaders in their communities. Plastic bottles are made of non-renewable fuels and have a large carbon footprint. We use 17 million barrels of oil every year just to produce plastic bottles. The energy to pump, process, transport, and refrigerate plastic bottles use even more oil at approximately 50 million barrels a year. By 2050, it is estimated that approximately 20% of global greenhouse footprint will be due to plastic. Plastic can leach also into chemicals, into consumables, and be found in rain, the air we breathe, and even water that we drink. Evidence suggests that human ingestion of plastic may even have adverse consequences. Plastic also never biodegrades and can lead to plastic frag fragments polluting our waterways, contaminating soil, and sickening animals, which we sometimes then eat. Overall, plastic bottles impact environmental and human health and the longevity of other species who may also ingest plastics as food. As a coastal community, if we wish to reduce our plastic consumption, then we must demand our government to follow a more sustainable model. Our town government should not be allowed to continue to participate in the destructive industry of plastic, which has been marketed to us as a product we need for convenience. Everything starts at a local level, and we must start with the town, which must take the initiative and be an example to follow. Plastic bottle consumption, specifically, is also a unique issue to the U.S. The U.S. consumes roughly 60% of the world's plastic bottles, despite being only 4.5% of the world's population. Approximately 1,500 plastic bottles are consumed every second in the U.S. In total, about 50 billion plastic bottles are consumed every year, with about 30 billion of them in the U.S. The purpose of this bylaw is to protect the town's beauty, reduce litter, protect the health of present and future generations and save the citizens of the town money needlessly spent on packaged water or any other beverages from distant sources in plastic bottles. So the first question that we're going to be discussing has to do with um, can people bring their own single-use plastic beverage bottles um, to the beach, school, or any other um, property still? So Mary's going to answer this question. Well we of course would not promote or encourage anyone to keep using single-use plastic beverage bottles. Article 9 would not prohibit private citizens from bringing whatever beverage containers they prefer on town property, such as the beach or the schools. This means students can still bring whatever they want to drink from at school. So the second question we're going to answer is, does this ban prevent stores from continuing to sell single-use plastic containers? This is not a commercial ban, but rather the first step to reducing our plastic consumption, so it only affects sales on town property. Another question that we're frequently asked is, could students or other groups still sell beverages at sporting events and or other fundraisers? Are the schools affected by this article? 
Will this affect school lunches? Could kids still bring plastic containers to school? Will this affect the school nurses? So this is obviously a lot of questions and all of them are pretty much containing to um, the schools and so I will be answering this. So students and other groups operating under the umbrella of the town would no longer be able to sell single-use plastic beverage bottles on town property. However, this does not mean they are restricted from bringing whatever type of beverage container they wish to use as a private citizen on town property. So students can still bring whatever they wish to drink from, and this ban would not affect them. Now, some people may think that the ban could in some ways be punitive, but I can speak as someone who has been involved in student council and class officers at my school for nearly four years now and say that the profit margins of plastic bottled beverages is not something that would in any way negatively impact fundraising. So trust me, I had to organize prom and a plethora of other events um, and the ban would just not be harmful. Um, but the overarching point of this discussion um, that needs to be made is that profit is not the issue we should be talking about. Fundamentally, this is a health and environmental issue. And if we're willing to be the environmental stewards that Cape Cod loves to claim to be, then we need to move away from plastic. Simply put, this is not about who can make a few bucks off of convenience. It's about the long-term longevity and welfare of our community. As a student of the Sandwich Public School System, I would also like to touch upon the point about how this would affect the schools specifically. So the schools sell plastic beverage bottles primarily only at lunch, and um, there's also a few vending machines at the school. Um, and there are plenty of alternatives of plastic which can be used to replace these. We'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, in fact, in just the span of five days from high school students alone, I collected nearly 250 signatures asking town meeting voters to support the ban. And this is from students. The younger generations understand the issue of plastic and care deeply for our planet because we will be the ones who have to live with the consequences of our current inaction. And I can guarantee you that if you walk around the hallway and stop into any classroom, you'll see that nearly every student brings their own reusable water bottle. At the high school, we also have refilling stations, which are perfect for this. Um, and the new food vendor, the Abbey Group, is a more environmentally conscientious group. And we hope to further the dialogue we have already started with them once the ban passes. And we think they'll be amenable to finding alternatives to the plastic bottled beverages currently being sold. The cafeteria also has large water jugs that students can get cups of water from and refill their water bottle with. Once we stop relying on our ability to easily buy a plastic bottle, we'll start making the necessary changes to simply just bring a reusable bottle every day. I'm at a point in life where I have to become um, so accustomed to not leaving my house unless I have a bottle. Additionally, some people are concerned about if this would at all affect school nurses. Um, and I have talked to a lot of the nurses personally and they say, that they would very much be in support of encouraging more students to start bringing their own reusable water bottles. Um, we also discussed the possibility of also looking for grants to gather more reusable water bottles um, and working with the PTA and other groups to hopefully be able to gather a large sum of these um, that the school nurses can distribute to students. Um, we also talked with the school's administration and we've received positive responses from basically everyone at the school level. Um, and I think part of it is how clear we have tried to be with communication and our intent along the process of filing this petition. And as I said, it is students who are in favor of this ban. And the final point to bring up here about the schools is their concerns for athletes and whether they'll be impacted. Like I said, um, students though are still free to bring whatever type of container they would like to drink from. And most use a reusable bottle to fill up anyways. The next question we are going to be answering it has to do with what the alternatives are to single-use plastic bottles. As we've mentioned, the goal of our organization is to bring about greater consumer awareness and encourage behavioral change. The best option is for people to simply just start using their own reusable bottles. Sandwich has high quality tap water and provides regular governmental reports on its quality. Plastic beverage bottles are not under the same scrutiny as municipal water because the town has to undergo regulations from the EPA as well as the state. Corporations who are manufacturing and selling you cheaply produced products do not necessarily go through the same testing products. Additionally, we are working on getting water filling stations around town and we are working with the TAP app to begin locating spots where we can put filling stations. 
We've been in contact with the water department and we are actively finding more places to provide access to water. Finally, there's water coming out in fully recyclable aluminum cans, which is better than plastic because it effectively can be recycled and it is recycled at a higher rate. There are plenty of glass and aluminum bottle and can alternatives for drinks which are better than plastic. We have the power as economic agents and consumers to control the market. So if we start ref refraining from buying single-use plastic, more companies will start to produce better and cheaper alternatives. Our next question, why can't we just promote recycling instead? So this seems to be one of the questions we receive a lot. Um, and we have become too accustomed and keen to the phrase, reduce, reuse, recycle. But lately we have only been focusing on the word recycle and that aspect of the phrase. But the problem with this is that this list of important words are listed in order of importance. Reducing and reusing are the most impactful ways we can begin to change our behavior. The problem with recycling plastic is that um, it is done at an alarmingly low rate. It is estimated around 80% of plastic water bottles end up in landfills, and putting a bottle into a bin is not recycling. Plastic is actually not being properly recycled like you would hope. With a lot of our former recipients of recycled materials like China, they are no longer taking in our plastic. Furthermore, recycled plastic bottles are rarely used to create new bottles. Instead, they are used in clothing, carpet, and building materials. Somewhere along a plastic bottle's life cycle, it has to be discarded, and this is simply not sustainable. Recycling does not reduce the demand for new plastic bottles. If this was not reason enough to convince you why recycling is not enough, um, take a look at Recycling Here in Sandwich with information directly from our DPW. The differential in cost for recycling and how much money the town actually has lost since 2017 is $30 per ton of cans, plastics, and bottles. This means that the town loses $20,000 a year due to how ineffective recycling really is. And I want to make sure that this is very clear to you um, from an economic perspective. We are paying and losing money from recycling. So this is simply not sustainable and it is not economical. The next question is how um, emergency situations and first responders would be affected by the ban. We've carefully thought about this ban and its implications. Thus, the article clearly points out two specific exemptions. One is for emergency situations where the quality of drinking water would be affected. The town would be exempt from the ban in a situation like this in an emerg if an emergency is declared by the town. The second exemption is for any town departments engaged in public health and safety operations. We believe both of these provisions are necessary because the goal of this is to truly look out for the well-being of the town. Next question we have for Jacob. How do you plan on enforcing this ban? How will this affect vendors because part of the petition restricts the sale on town property under all contracts? So we receive the common joke a lot about whether we are going to have the bottle police, um, but this article truly is simple.